Wam, Kala Yahawa, Bashem Yashai, Bashem Rukha Kodash, the waters of my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and mercy to the elect, with the house of David reborn again in this generation, the Shalom to the 130 Yasharala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who before losing our true heritage were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to go over a segment that I like to call Week in Prophecy. This will be the third installment. Well, in these series, I simply just go through some of the more relevant topics that are going on and tie them to biblical prophecy. So let's go and get started. And we're going to talk about the march towards World War III. But let's read this first. This is Revelations 14, 11 and 14. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. We today announce the kickoff of Exercise Steadfast Defender 2024, which commences next week and runs through May. Steadfast Defender 24 will be the largest NATO exercise in decades, with participation from approximately 90,000 forces from all 31 allies, plus our good partner Sweden. The Alliance will demonstrate its ability to reinforce the Euro-Atlantic area via transatlantic movement of forces from North America. This reinforcement will occur during a simulated emerging conflict scenario against a near peer adversary. Steadfast Defender 24 will be a clear demonstration of our unity, our strength, and our determination to protect each other, to protect, of course, our values and the rules-based international order. What you're about to see is a news report that, if true, has serious implications for the next steps in what could blow up into a global conflict. And I hope I'm not exaggerating, but I'd be curious to hear your feedback in the comments. And please pass this along to others. People need to hear this. I want to read to you what this article said today. The United States, Britain, and Ukraine are behind the terrorist attacks at Crocus City Hall. The chief of Russia's Federal Security Service, Alexander Borkanov, has told the media, quote, we believe that this is true. What we have here today is the head of the Russian FSB, the Federal Security Bureau, their equivalent of the FBI, now is on record saying that his agency is convinced that the United States, Great Britain, and Ukraine Ukraine were behind the terrorist attack in Moscow Friday night that killed 140 people. Think about this. If we had a terrorist attack in America, a mass shooting in, in a concert, and 140 Americans died, and four days later, the director of the FBI tells the American people, we know that Russia and China and Iran were behind this terrorist attack. What do you think would be the response inside the American society today? There would be calls for war. There would be demands for retaliation. Whether the United States and Great Britain were involved or not, it doesn't matter. The Russians believe that the United States and Great Britain were behind it. That's the only thing that matters because that's what will drive them to declare war. It says breaking possible sea confrontation between Russia and NATO. The Russian Pacific Fleet has entered Red the Red Sea, making its way to the coast of Yemen, where multiple American and British ships carry out strikes against Houthis. So you see, we're about to see a lot of action in that region, right? We're gonna we're seeing, as we see, watched in the first video, America and its NATO ally. Which, if you have, you've been watching these lessons. You know that NATO is the beast spoken about in Revelation, America being the whore that rides upon its back. Okay, well, they're being gathered into to the area of the Levant, towards the area where the Lord prophesied he would take everybody uh, to, to fight Armageddon, World War III. And as you can see here, this is the Russian fleet uh, sailing, uh, you know, I think, believe out of port going towards the uh, Red Sea. And again, if you're not sure where the Red Sea is, let's uh, take a look. It's down here. This is the Red Sea. Now, they've been attacking, America has been attacking the Houthis around this area here, this nation here. So again, the Russian ships are coming up here 
and NATO, they're going to be uh, conducting their, their wars up in this area. Because again, they're right now <clears throat> in Ukraine. So again, so they're gonna, you're going to see a lot of uh, the steadfast defender uh, I think treaty is going to be happening in, in, in the European area. So that being said, that's what's going down. And the thing is, is as you heard from the second video, Russia, which is Magog in the Bible, which uh, is going to come up against America, Babylon the Great. Like, as you heard them, they're convinced that the West is involved. And why is that? Well, because it says the Moscow terrorists received money and crypto transfers from Ukraine. And where is Ukraine getting all of its money right now? Well, America. Okay, so Ukraine is simply just a puppet for the American proxy war that it's being thrusted into. And Russia knows this, and this is why you're gonna start seeing a lot more tension rise up. In a video I made I, uh, last week, I believe I uh, <clears throat> posted how China says that they're ready to defend Russia no matter where in the world. Right? And then you got talks of North Korea wanting to start a fight. Is North Korean leader Kim Jong-un about to go to war with South Korea and the United States? Some experts think it's possible. Kim has ordered his military to prepare for the occupation of South Korea and is, according to some, engaged in frantic military development. And after South Korea and the United States began the Freedom Shield 24 exercises, designed to deter a North Korean invasion, it only caused Kim to issue more threats of war. The task of North Korean experts has always been to try to separate bluster from real threats. And in the past, it's usually been bluster. Bong Young-shik at the Institute for North Korean Studies in Seoul says it's bluster, meant to undermine the current South Korean government from winning parliamentary elections in April. A disturbing report earlier this year by the respected 38 North website, however, indicates this time Kim may be serious. 38 North reports Kim Jong-un has made a strategic decision to go to war because the communist government sees a window of opportunity to forcibly reunify the Korean Peninsula. If the report is true, Asian expert Gordon Chang believes it would be part of a wider Asian war. North Korea wouldn't go to war unless it got the approval of both Moscow and Beijing. So probably um, if North Korea were to attack South Korea, it would be in conjunction with China attacking Japan, Taiwan, Philippines, India. Concerns about North Korea's nuclear program have grown in the past two years as the North has test-launched missiles at a record pace and openly threatened to launch a nuclear attack on the United States. Chang does not necessarily agree that North Korea is preparing for war, but says if it is, the blame falls on the White House for appearing weak. An important part of this article that I believe is absolutely true, and that is uh, the authors maintain that Kim Jong-un believes that the United States is in global retreat and that essentially he can pretty much do what he wants. That is a very dangerous mentality. And this is a thinking that also affects Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping. The United States needs to reestablish deterrence because at this moment, uh, the bad actors think that they have a green light. So there you have it, right? The nations, even the, the weak nations are saying they're strong and they're starting to come up against the powers that be, that being the nation of Edom, the NATO and the American Western power. <clears throat> Next, let's read this. This is Luke 21 and 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring. And we see we just went over the distress of nations that's going on right now right we're seeing nations starting to build up their military and starting to puff at each other next what we're going to be talking about is the uh, signs in the sun and what are these signs well let's take a look at this so the 2017 2024 solar eclipse a lot of people should notice by now if you don't then i'm guessing this is your date of you finding out about this so um 
the coincision of this eclipse pass is here in southern Illinois, also known as Carbondale, also known as Little Egypt. And this X right here um, is actually not the 2017 2024 total solar eclipse pass, but it's actually two fault line cracks that is going across America 1700 miles one way. 1600 miles the other way and the coincision is in as you can see is the same precisely the same location x marks the spot and that area just happens to be the new madrid seismic zone i showed this map already and i'll just show it again for context the new madrid seismic zone is known for three great eclipses and it's also i mean three great earthquakes and it's also known as one of the most biggest dangers to america this is a map from usgs and as you can see uh, talking about the highest hazards and lowest hazards this is the bar this is the meter all right and as you can see right here um, where the X marks the spot simultaneously with the eclipse and the earthquakes the activity is very very high and threat level and danger level is very very high so this is an exodus sign an exodus sign this is a sign of an exodus a physical spiritual mental awakening and exodus out of the system and it's also a prophetic sign for a people book reference the intersection of these two fault lines create an x at the new madrid seismic zone located in missouri just an hour and a half drive a 30 minute flight from carbondale known as little egypt What's particularly unsettling is the striking resemblance between the map of the seismic cracks and the paths of totality observed in the, in the solar eclipse. The correlation in the paths and locations might invoke a sense of awe or terror, depending on one's perspective, and invites contemplation on the possible means or connection these natural phenomena might hold. And you can see the striking resemblance in Forbes magazine doomsday map or doomsday crack because this would be the precise location of X marks the spot. The unsettling parallels between the seismic crack and the path of totality are not lost on those who study them, yet the lack of public warning from scientists or authorities are baffling. It calls to mind scenes from disasters, movies like 2012 where the government concealed intimate catastrophic to avert panic. Could we be living in such scenario? Have those in power suspected a looming threat and chosen silence over alarm? These questions linger, leaving us to ponder the cryptic message that nature seems to be signaling and wonder if humanity is truly ready to face whatever may be coming. Hmm. Now we see where Forbes get their prediction from. Hmm. But trust me, it's way much more deeper than you think. This is an exodus sign, a sign for a chosen people for the people, for humanity, for the world. And this guy isn't wrong, right? This is a sign that the Lord is bringing forward his prophecies. And the, the crazy thing is, is, like he said, that town there, uh, Cannondale, that it's known as Little Egypt. And, and what was the significance of that? Well, this, you see, um, America is the new Egypt, right? It's a modern day Egypt, which us Israelites, the Negro Latino Native Americans, have been brought through biblical divine events that have taken us through being conquered, losing our heritage, going into captivity, and then raising up and mingling ourselves amongst the heathen, okay? And, and being in a status of servitude. Well, as the Lord said, right, that, uh, that the Lord would bring us back into Egypt again by ships, right? The Northern Kingdom came over here on ships in 600, around 680 circa, and the, the Southern Kingdom came over here on ships starting in 1618, okay, during the uh, North Atlantic slave trade. And again, the, the big sign that that is coming on March 8th, right, what did, like, this say, or right, let me show you this video. Because the brother posts up uh, what it's gonna look like, a simulation on the eclipse. And down here at the bottom, you can see it tells you the city, like Florence, Alabama, uh, Friendsville, um, Minnesota, I think that's Minnesota, uh, Salisbury, Connecticut, and so on. 
explain it shows you the time so for example this doesn't show california but in california this will happen from like 10 to 11 and be fully uh cleared by 12. but again because in california we're not under the the uh the the, the main passage underneath it we're not going to see a full eclipse like what you're seeing here now eventually some places are going to get that full ring and these are going to be like it told like that guy showed in the video that that line of totality right that's going to go over and namely over that that uh that city little egypt which also is in the uh new madrid uh the new madrid uh, fault line okay and remember there's a scripture that tells you that the lord was going to bring forward these signs and what else did the lord tell us right as one of the signs to look out for in the uh and and when he, he was here he said this is matthew 12 and 39 but he answered and said unto them an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of the prophet jonas okay so you see when you get into this eclipse it crosses over uh, seven towns called called uh, Nineveh and one of the towns is called uh, I believe it's uh, rapture now the rap there's no such thing as the Christian rapture right where the Lord takes the, the believers and it comes back seven years and takes the rest that convert no there's only gonna be one so-called rapture and that's gonna be for the Israelites who are gonna make it till the end right because the Messiah said that those that endure until the end the same shall be saved so again, there's no saved people until until we're done with this. Okay, everybody's gonna have to go through this these trials and tribulations, the hour of temptations, as the scripture says. Now, but the amazing thing is, people don't know the solar eclipse is happening on the very same day as the original plagues of the three days of darkness began. No. Yes, yes. Okay, it's on okay, the okay. very same day. This one, this 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 one we're going to have. April April eighth is the very day of the three days of darkness plagues began in the in original the land of Exodus. Egypt. Yes, unbelievable. Is this a warning? Then is God? It's going. <laughs> we got the Nineveh and the Jonah towns going through, but I mean, is it, what kind of warning is this? Great question. Here's the thing. In Genesis one fourteen, God declared. Yeah. The sun and the moon were for signs. Right. The only signs they can give is eclipses. All right. And the nice thing about eclipses, no false prophet can manipulate it. No. Okay. And they speak to every language, tribe, nation, and tongue. Yep. They don't need to be translated. Nope. Solar eclipse means judgment is coming upon a nation. Lunar eclipse refers to judgment coming upon Israel. Okay. Now, get a load of this. There has only been, since we become a nation in 1776, there has only been eight total solar eclipses that have completely crossed the United States. I'm not talking about one that just clips California or Florida. I'm talking that traverses the whole United States horizontally or vertically. There, there's only been eight since we became a nation. Wow. And guess when they occurred? Two of them occurred during the Revolutionary War. Three of them occurred during the Civil War. Two of them occurred during the Vietnam War. Are we getting a hint of what this oh, means? Oh, no. And so now in the 2000s, there was 2017, and now this one in 2024, and it's like a bullseye it forms an X right over the United States. Now, here's what's amazing. Of those eight, only one which was the one seven years ago, it only crossed the United States and no other country. The other ones crossed Mexico and Canada and US or something right. like that. But the United States was singled out with Just the one, one seven years ago. Yes. Once. Wow. And now we have April 8th on Nissan One. That Nissan One is the same day the glory of God fell. It's the same day of the inauguration ceremony of Moses Tabernacle. Okay, this is when this eclipse crosses these two places in the United States, and it's definitely God wants to communicate with us. People have to understand, God wants 
to communicate. These eclipses are communications directly from God warning us of what's coming. I mean, this is without a question a biblical sign. I was telling people yeah. uh, earlier that you know you got the solar eclipses. That's God made. You, when you have a moon, a lunar eclipse, or a blood moon that you were yeah. so famous in bringing forward, that's a God sign. The there's two different types of locusts coming. You know, we know that. Yeah. You know, there's all all of these signs that are coming right now are all God signs. They're not man made, not no. man manipulated. It right. isn't Y two K. Right. Okay. It's not the mind calendar. Right. It's not Harold <laughs> Camping predicting the rapture. Right. All of which exactly. man made and failed. These yes. are God signs. You can't run from these. These are biblical, right? Ex that's the whole point. See, the problem is the church is on the wrong calendar because our regular calendar is based only on the sun that's the, wrong and, that's wrong and I, iran uses the same calendar we do okay then you have the muslim calendar which is only based on the moon now they're both scientifically accurate but they're not the one god uses like if i'm meeting with you we have a two or three hour time difference right if we're gonna meet we gotta agree on what time right god is the master of time and if you're a slave who controls your time? The master. The master he tells you does. when to go to bed, when to get up, when to do this. God, the first commandment. Most people don't realize, you know, the very first commandment wasn't given on Mount Sinai. The very first commandment was given in Egypt, and it was get on my calendar. Nisan wow. 1 is the first day. He wants his people on his calendar. Well, in Genesis 114, it says, let them determine the times not let the sun, not let the moon. But the reason why, you can only have a solar eclipse on a new moon. You can only have a lunar eclipse that's on true. a full moon. That's so true. that's why he says, okay, your months are based on the new moon. This way I can communicate with you. Yep. Okay, Passover and Sukkot are on a full moon so I can yep. communicate with you. Because it's whole, the appointed times, appointed it, times. Exactly. It, it's so there you see, the, uh, the Lord, is making a clear sign with this eclipse right we're going to have to wait to see right the next not this coming up monday but it's the monday after that okay so in two so you got what this next week and then the week following that coming back out of the weekend on that following monday on the 8th you, you're gonna we're gonna see this eclipse and then we're gonna see what's coming after it right and, and the crazy thing is that they're getting ready for uh what is it the national guard to show up at some of these towns uh you have uh this kind of like sensationalist judite who comes out with videos uh, he said that he was called by a sheriff and they were told from the department of homeland security to be careful because some people are going to be displaying animalistic or maybe displaying animalistic tendencies after the eclipse so who knows what's coming right people uh, may may get bugged out and start acting crazy or you may have Esau push forward these uh his his three days of darkness right hence the lord bringing back the the three days of darkness of egypt right but it may be at the ha hands of egypt or these devils you know well through his plot and there may be some substations that are destroyed you're gonna have big electrical outages right these devils are already warning that the light of plight may go out because of disruptions in service and whatnot. So again, you know, just be careful, Akim. This right here is going to more likely turn into something huge. And again, the, the, the these devils, you know, they're known for never letting uh, an emergency go to waste. Now, let's move on. Could a Texas cow start Armageddon in the Middle East in April 2024? And what does this have to do with Israel's war on Palestine's Gaza? On the 100-day anniversary of Israel's brutal assault on Gaza, Hamas spokesman Abu Afoda released a video explaining the motivations behind the group's incursion into Israel on October 7th. Alongside Israel's continued occupation of Palestine, he also mentioned the bringing of red cows into the occupied Palestinian territories. Afoda was referring to the plans of numerous right-wing Israeli groups who believe that a red cow must be sacrificed in order for the Jews to progress plans to demolish the Al-Aqsa Mosque and build the fabled Third Temple in its place. It might sound like a conspiracy theory, but hardliner Israeli group the Temple Institute have already purchased and imported five red Angus heifers from Texas at a cost of $500,000. They have 
have been grazing in a kibbutz in the occupied West Bank since 2022, with reports that the sacrifice is planned to take place as early as April 2024. The sacrifice of the red heifer has its roots in the Torah and the Talmud, and it is believed that the ritual is necessary to purify the Jews so that they can pray at the Al-Aqsa compound. The sacrifice will reportedly take place on a plot of land on Mount Horus, facing the Al-Aqsa Mosque. The cow must be completely red, including its hooves, and must be around three years old at the time of sacrifice. Following the sacrifice, the ashes of the cow are due to be mixed with water and used to purify selected Jewish priests and their adherents. Since occupying East Jerusalem in 1967, right-wing Zionists have long sought to build a third temple in place of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. While initially the goal only of fringe groups such as the Temple Institute, the plan has been mainstream in recent years, with groups of settlers regularly storming the Muslim compound and attracting support from numerous politicians and commentators. Temple organizations have even submitted blueprints for the construction of the temple and prepared the ornaments it will hold. Last year, during the month of Ramadan, a temple movement activist was arrested after he and a group of Jewish extremists attempted to bring a goat into the Al-Aqsa compound for a ritual sacrifice. The decades-long Israeli excavations under the Al-Aqsa Mosque have also been condemned by international archaeologists and denounced by numerous authorities who say they are a means of weakening the foundations of the mosque to facilitate its demolition. If Israel were to attempt to demolish the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the third holiest site in Islam, it would trigger outrage across the Arab and Muslim world. However, even if these right-wing Jewish groups are unable to proceed with the demolition, many fear that the sacrifice itself could embolden Jewish extremists to occupy the mosque and further restrict the rights of Palestinians to access the holy site. So as for the cows, uh, you can see the three red heifers that still qualify to become the red heifer from which the ashes can be extracted for this very important ceremony of purification. All the three red heifers are of age now, so they are in their third year. So that means they are they qualify already to be sacrificed. Cows indeed uh, are this uh, deep reddish er uh, earth, red earth color. And so we got to see them, we got to photograph them, we got to take our pictures together with them. And uh, this to me was a once in a lifetime experience. It's something, like I said, that I never could have imagined that I would have the merit and the honor to uh, participate in. And to me, this is just another sign that we're getting closer than ever to the final redemption, to the days of Mashiach. And recently, CBS News uh, released a clip. I'll link it here in the description of the video where they showed how Hamas launched the attack against Israel in part because they're concerned that the Jews plan to rebuild the temple. But one confounding yet eye-opening motive has escaped the headlines. In a recent speech, a Hamas spokesman blamed the Jews for bringing red cows to the Holy Land. The cows he's talking about at a secure, undisclosed location are these. And rebuilding the temple, of course, in their eyes is a threat to the Dome of the Rock. Um, and Hamas actually pointed out that they, that the Jews are preparing red heifers in order to build the temple. And this is something that they're very afraid of. And to me, when our worst enemies are afraid of something that we're doing, that's a sign that we're doing the right thing. Do you remember spotless red heifers arriving at the Israel airport from Texas? That has gone one huge step ahead. And now Israel has built an altar for the red heifers to be sacrificed. The five heifers will be sacrificed and burned on none other date than the March 29th. Yes. The coming 29th of March. And when will the ashes be used for the ritual? On 31st March. Two days after the slaughter. All the preparations have been made. All the prophecies are coming true, and the situation is going to be even scarier. All of these preparations only meant that the Jews had always been keen on their third temple, and the arrival of their Messiah, and everything that they had been doing was actually for this very day. The Jews teach in their schools the purpose of their lives, and that is to pray and wait for the Messiah, and contribute everything they can towards the building of the third temple. So what will really happen is that there will be a huge ceremony, most probably a highly secret one. There the rabbis will gather around and the heifer will be slaughtered. 
It won't be just any heifer, it will be a spotless, healthy, non-pregant, female red heifer, which has now been born after 2000 years. This sacrifice will mark the arrival of the Messiah, who according to the beliefs of the Jews, will bring glory and, pe and peaks of power to them. The Jew rabbis say that this ritual is necessary before the arrival of their Messiah, the Dajjal. These red heifers will be slaughtered and burnt right before the preparations of the third temple begin. The ashes will then be cooled down, and then used for the holy purpose of purification. The Book of Numbers, the fourth Bible clearly states that, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, this is a requirement of the law that the Lord has commanded, tell the Israelites to bring you a red heifer without defect or blemish and that has never been under a yoke, this will be a lasting ordinance both for the Israelites and for the aliens living among them. This whole ritual of an unblemished red heifer is connected to a very important incident during the times of Hazrat Musa A.S. Hazrat Musa A.S. had temporarily gone to the Mount Tur for worship and the people of Bani Israel had started worshipping the cow behind his back. When Musa A.S. came back, he killed the cow and destroyed its idol. So, a red heifer is in so many ways an important sign for Bani Israel. That is why they believe that if they once again sacrifice a red heifer in the name of Allah, they will succeed in their motives. They believe that after this happens, they will soon get the control of the Masjid Al-Aqsa, and the heckle of Suleimani will be rebuilt soon. Now that we connect the arrival of red heifers in Israel, with the escalated situation of violence on the people of the Holy Land, we can see that things are really going towards the end of times. In just this past year 2022, five red heifers that comply with the required criterion have been imported from Texas, and today, they graze in a ground with utmost care and supervision, in a highly secret place. What is so special about these red heifers is that these are not just any red heifers. They qualify the strict criterion, which says that the heifer to be sacrificed should be red in color, between 3 and 4 years of age, never been pregnant, and it should not have a single spot on its body. Such a heifer had not been born in the last 2000 years, but now, the Jews have what they had been so desperately looking for. Brothers and sisters, is any of this true? Is this red heifer a sign of the end of times? The second Corinthians 11 and 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So I read this because when you understand what's going on, these Israelis, which are in the land of Israel today, they are not the biblical Jews. Okay? They are the biblical Edomites who are prophesied to steal the land of Israel. Let's get that. This is uh, Ezekiel 36 and 5. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. In my burning zeal, I have spoken against the rest of the nations and against all Edom. For with glee and with malice in their hearts, they had made my land their own their own possession and so that they might plunder its pasture lands so you see this is the niv version because it says it more plainly but yeah it tells you that the nation the nation of edom which are these ashkenazi jews would eventually steal their land and that's what you're ultimately seeing in them taking gaza uh, uh the the basra heights um, southern Lebanon and then also starting their campaigns into uh, the the, Gaza, the the West Bank okay and their entrance into the West Bank is likely going to be the the triggering factor that's going to bring the other nations right there to the Valley of Jehoshaphat which is prophesied to be where the Lord is going to gather these nations now all these other things I've brought up are the things that the Lord is doing to bring forward these nations Okay, from the, the, you know, doing these military exercises to showing these other nations that the West is behind the terrorist attacks to the crazy signs that the Lord is giving in the sky and how it's going over the towns of Nineveh and Jonah and, and Rapture and, and, uh, and Little Egypt, right? See that right there? It's, there's no such things as coincidences, right? Uh, there's a famous saying that says coincidence is just God being anonymous, and it's plain to see, man, when you, when you look at the, the, the way the signs work, that this is the Lord, right, putting together, you know, his his uh, narrative, right, to putting together 
his his narrative, right? He's showing the world what the truth is because of the uh, terrorist attacks on Russia. Uh, yet Putin come out and and reveal that the Israelites and the Messiah were so-called black people, right? And the thing is, is the the biggest deception here is with this red heifer, right? These devils pretending to be the saints, pretending to be the chosen people, and masquerading as these angels of light are trying to deceive the world, right? You see, because there's the, and this isn't in the Bible, but this is this comes from Christianity. You see, Christianity, um, and also Islam, when you look at it, um, they know that that the that there's going to come a, an Antichrist. Now, the Bible doesn't say that there's going to be one particular Antichrist, right? It tells you there's many Antichrists. And the, the main Antichrist in the end time are going to be the nation of Edom. And how is that? Well, you see, the nation of Edom are the ones perpetrating this third temple. They're the ones perpetrating a, a returning of Cesare Borgia, which is the, the, the true name to white Jesus. Okay, that's their Messiah, okay? The David Rothschilds and what now, right? The, what that guy looks like. Okay, now the, the point being is that these are, are the uh, the false Jews, right? So hence they're going to build the false temple and they're going to bring forward the false Messiah, right? They already, uh, when you get into their their religion, uh, they have this, uh, this guy um, that he's like an Orthodox Jew and they call, they're calling him the Messiah, right? And they're making these false... They're, they're making these false uh, claims of that he does miracles and he's healed people from cancer and all these things. So these devils, you know, they, they, they got the whole world fooled and they're going fully for it. And why is that? Well, because, you see, they have plans to kill off the majority of the world. And to do that, they got to put on the razzle-dazzle, okay? It says, because you see the thing, but here's the biblical thing, right? The, the, though they're building the false temple... There's a true temple being built. The third temple that they're trying to build is the spiritual temple, which Yahweh Shai was talking about building here. This is John 2 and 19. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Okay, now he's ultimately talking about his body. Okay, because you see, the body of the Israelites, those are are the temple of the Messiah. That's the true temple, okay? So in this case here, Yahweh Shai was speaking about his own body and hence how he was going to raise on the third day. Now, this isn't exclusively just for the Messiah. This is also for us Israelites. This is uh, 1 uh, Corinthians 3 and 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? See, the letter of Corinthians was written to the Hebrews, or as you could, or as you could say, the Israelites that were living in the town of Corinth, right? Corinth being, I believe, in Turkey. You see, we're the temple of the Most High, right? And when you start to follow the ways of the Lord, you start following His commandments, and you're an Israelite, you make your your body, you cleanse it, okay? And when you cleanse your body and you fill it with the knowledge of God, the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, which is the understanding of the of the Bible, by watching these lessons, hearing the apostles and the brothers break down what the Bible means, you start getting the understanding, and hence the Holy Spirit comes into you. Right, the Spirit dwells with you, and then hence you become that temple of God. Okay, that's the true temple that is being raised up in this time. That's going to raise that great army. That when these devils see it. These Israelis, the, these elites of the world, they're going to be terrified with great fear, as the Bible says. This is Revelations 21 and 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. You see, the Israelites, the nation of Israel, we are akin to the bride. Right, that's going to mar be married on to the Messiah, who is the bridegroom. See, and this holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, this is going to be the elect, the 144,000 plus the one or the 1,200 out of every 12 tribes, making um, 
um, the 144,000, the elect, right? And then you're going to have one out of every three Negro, Latino, and Native Americans, right? The one third. That's the new Jerusalem. Because remember, the it's a pe a place is a people before it's a place. Okay, it tells you this in in uh, Second Maccabees and a lot of other places in the Bible. So again, this is the true temple that's being built, not this fake temple that these devils are going to try to build. And as you've seen in that video, they're going to uh, spread the ashes tomorrow you know that's the the plan right they uh, supposedly they sacrificed this, this these heifers yesterday on the 29th and on the 31st they're going to spread and and sanctify the area with the dashes this is isaiah 55 and 6 seek ye the lord yahweh while he may be found call ye upon him while he is near so you see we have to take heed to these signs that the Lord is giving. There's a reason why the Lord is giving these signs. He's not doing it to show off. He's doing it to call us Israelites to repent, to get right with the Lord, to follow his, his commandments, so that way we can receive the promise that was given onto us. So, and, and besides that, so we can regain our lost heritage. So hopefully this... A review of this week in prophecy was was edifying Akim. and hopefully I was able to go over some things that we don't cover too much since there's been a lot of coverage of, of local information I thought we'd it'd be good to kind of cover things going on over there and the uh, land of, of uh, Jerusalem okay so so tell the next time I want to give honor and glory and praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Shalom.